My name is uh, Nikunj Edadania. Today I'm talking about uh, secure TSC on AMD SCV SNP guests. Uh, this is right. OK. Yep. So uh, basic things, uh, starting with uh, what is a T, uh, TSC. So um, x86 or any architecture uses, uh, has a counter that counts the number of processor cycles. It can be accessed on x86 by two methods. One is the legacy method of reading the TSC MSR or uh, using the RDTSC interface. So this is pretty simple. But when you get into the guest, um, there are various different um, uh, values that come into picture. So um, I'm just listing down a few of them, which is um, like one is the TSC raw, um, uh, the TSC ratio MSR, and the TSC offset, which is part of the VMCV. <laughs> uh, the TSC ratio and the T, um, TSC offset are hypervisor control. So um, these two values, if, 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 if a malicious hypervisor tries to change, it, it can change the view of the guest's TSC. So uh, this, this basically is a security concern that um, uh, the T TSC value can be, um, uh, the guest, guest can, be, can see a value which is, uh, does not move or it, it moves at a very faster rate, right? Um, uh, for SCV and SCVES guests, both um, we uh, we have this uh, where the, where the guest uh, legacy will always have it, but SCV and SCV guests also has the same issue. So, um, so the SCV SNP um, guests introduces a feature called Secure TSC, where um, the values that are used to calculate the TSC in the guest. Uh, is not uh, dependent on the hypervisor controlled parameters. So um, when you look at the guest TSC scale and the guest TSC offset, both of them are part of the uh, VM secure area, uh, which is an encrypted page. So, so bo both these values um, are used to compute the TSC, TSC in the guest. And that basically makes sure that, uh, that uh, the hypervisor cannot change any uh, the TSC. Uh, there is a, also a new MSR that has been introduced um, as part of um, uh, the guest can read what is the frequency that the TSC is running at. Uh, uh, the read TSC and the read TSCP in, uh, instructions, um, basically um, can, the guest side can uh, prevent those things from uh, getting into the host. If, if the host hypervisor tries to intercept those things, um, uh, the VC handler uh, intercepts that and uh, does not allow it to go to the host. Uh, with secure TSC enabled, we could basically um, use it as, as as a clock source instead of currently um, KVM clock is being used uh, as a clock source, which is a parabolic clock. But uh, when secure TSC is available, we can use that as a clock source. So going on to the next slide. Yes. How do you envision this working with live migration where you migrate to a VM that's running at a different core clock and then you've got to teach something inside the guest, inside the TCB to deal with scaling, with changing the scale if you're not letting the untrusted host push that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the the scale and the offset are part of the vmsa right yes. and in the migration architecture that tom talked about earlier there is a basically a portion of the svsm that runs on both the source and destination right so the one on the destination it can uh get information about what the physical tsc runs at on that box and when it gets the incoming vmsa it can calculate what the new ratio needs to be in order to keep a consistent view. And then also, of course, you need time to move forward. So it calculates an offset similar to how it's used today uh, to you know, start the TSE from that point. So it can be done in theory. It's not built yet. I would suggest go read the five threads that we have on dealing with TSC migration and KVM and just how many times we've got it wrong. I think we have like five ABIs and they all suck. So. Okay. Don't write a sixth one, because reinvent one of the fifth. <laughs> uh, so um, this page basically talks about the um, flow, how, how the uh, VM boots with the secure TAC. Uh, so um, the VMM uh, can basically configure 
um, the desired TSC frequency that it wants the VM to run at. And um, uh, while updating the VMS page, um, we basically give the, we enable the secure TSC. And once the VM run happens, the, the secure, um, the, for the boot CPUs, the guest TSC scale and uh, the offset is programmed by the AMD security processor. But for the secondary uh, CPUs, the, uh, the values need to be queried uh, uh, from the AMD security processor. So the um, boot CPU basically needs to talk to the AMD security processor and that is a communication channel that um, is encrypted uh, using the SNP guest messages. So um, uh, the message basically goes from the guest uh, via the hypervisor and um, the hypervisor relays that to the AMD security processor. That is the TSC info request message. So once that reaches the AMD security processor, it fills in the TSC um, offset and the TSC scale, which again comes back and um, the guest decrypts that. And that is basically programmed into the uh, uh, the um, secondary CPUs uh, VMSA. And that's how it starts the uh, auxiliary processor with the with the uh, offset values and the scaling value. Yeah. So I think that's about it. And I have the patches, which is like um, V5 version right now. And uh, there was a few comments uh, related to uh, KVM clock, where the KVM clock um, uh, is selected as a clock source before secure TSE. So one of the ideas were to reduce the rating of the KVM clock to, to get security TSC before that, actually. So that that uh, I did try that. It, it does work, but, but I'm not sure whether we can reduce that. Uh, to it, it was 299, and we can do it to 298 or something like that. And there was something that Dave Hansen pointed about using the TSC reliable. That, that seems to be working, actually. Yeah. That's about it. I, yeah. Uh, this probably seems like a silly question, but with these SCV optional features, how would the VMM know whether the guest supports these and if we can enable it at launch time or not? Like, is there any, are we too late? Could could we go to a, the guest is running and then it says, oh, I actually want secure TSC and we enable it. Um, so so this is a secure uh, SCV SNP feature. So, um, we could enable it for any any SCV SNP, but yes. the guest needs to have the patches, right? To 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 do Correct. this dance. That's so right. Yeah, this is, these I, are the guest patches. Yeah. How do I, as the hypervisor, know if I should turn this on or not? Okay. Okay. So if uh, if the guest does not support the patch, so uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. If the guest does, doesn't doesn't support the patch, um, you would fail pretty early um, in the guest boot, saying that this feature bit which you had enabled is not supported by the following guest. So as someone who answers customer tickets, is there any way okay. that we okay. could do that better? Like mm -hmm. before we before okay. we launch the guest, can I like, mm -hmm. yeah. I was kind of hoping to catch it. Um, <laughs> so the, the SVSM, one of the first things it, it can do is check the SAV features, uh, but to check that they match the expected, the expected one. So that will be a way to prevent that it happens at right time. I think what Peter's asking is, is there any way we can tell if the kernel before. supports it before we before. launch it? Yeah. So that you don't run into a situation where it crashes. Yeah. And that's something we can probably look into yeah. of seeing if there's any way to expose the supported features of a guest in some way uh, so that mm -hmm. you can examine uh, examine it somehow. I, I'm not sure what we'd be able to do. but. Yeah, thank you. A suggestion for the for this and lots of other things with SVM related stuff, we might want to make a list of all the things that are requiring enlightenment in the guest to some extent and see if that pushes over the boundary of creating a paravisor. As much as I hate the idea, like there's a growing list of things that are going to be really hard to solve if we don't have host provided trusted code running in a VMPL. Sure. Sure. 
So the specific problem with the Paravisor, if you're thinking about the SVSM one, is every call to it is a VM exit. You will slow us down enormously if we don't do guest uh, enlightenment. I mean, we can for sort of legacy guests or things that have weird and wonderful ABIs, but if we do it for the main line, confidential computing will be so slow as to be unusable. Well, we know what it looks like for the SPSM but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, that's like for this, do you have to, uh, I'm just wondering, spitballing real quick, do you have to actually transition into VMPL0 all that much or can you just have it do the setup and then pass off so you get the secure TSC stuff set up in VMPL0 and you're happening to run at VMPL whatever? And if VMPL whatever doesn't know secure TSC, it's fine. It just doesn't crash. It just doesn't use the secure TSC, something like that. Thank you very much for the discussion. Thank you, Nicole. Yes, sir. Are we going?